Making a life worth living and retirement worth having is about the people in our lives. It's about how we utilize our skills, our talents, and literally our treasures. They often call this time, talent, and treasures in religious circles, but I like to add two additional pieces, tools and technology. You see, it's our technology that is allowed to be utilized by us, not at all. It is our technology that we either purchase or rent or borrow from various companies, organizations, and community facilities. When a person is literally doing something in technology, their rights are protected underneath many crime laws. The act of cybercrime is illegal, immoral, and illicit. When I'm talking, I'm talking very authentically. You might see me burp, you might see me scratch my nose, you might see me do a lot of things, but that's what we do in audio cast and podcast land as we talk about the realities of the world. The present election is coming into pe- being. We have a president that is either staying or going. We have to look at the other incumbents, if you will, who are out there helping that man to do things. But at the same time, we have to look at the up-and-comers, the folks that have different ideas, new ways of thinking, new backgrounds to bring to the literal table of us being a superpower in the world of the nations around the globe. When I'm talking about this, I'm always reminded by the United Nations and our world treaties of which we as American citizens have had signed for us by the politicians presently in power and those of the past. The International Human Rights Declaration provided us 30 articles, of which are sort of a law, if you will, an international law, that requires us to regard the rights of others as equal to our own. It also says that where my rights begin and your rights end are at the same line. It means that I have no right to be a lord in your life and govern you in any way, shape, or form with regard to your mind, your body, your spirit, your emotions, or your soul. What that means is that literally no one has the right to tell me to do something that I am not comfortable with is pretty much the truth. This allows us to then function underneath the federal United States Constitution of our sovereign nation, which literally says these are the rules. We have the right to worship without someone impeding that right or interfering with our rights to go to a church or a house of worship. We also have the right to assemble with people we like to align ourselves with without someone in that assembly or someone outside that assembly trying to say, you're not welcome here. We also have the right to have our own personhood regarded. There are medical practitioners that don't have the right to do things to us, yet they violate those international treaties and those federal laws all the time when they try to lord over someone's life. When I talk about these things, I talk about it from practical experience of hearing the horror stories of how people are paying for bills that they never knew they were going to get because there's an industry that doesn't require an estimate or an option up front that says, how do you feel about these bills that are going to come to you if you utilize these services? That is outlandish, and it's sort of false advertising. We have laws that protect us against that. We also have civil liberty laws, which allow us the freedom of movement, much like the International Declaration of Human Rights that says, We have the freedom to move through a community without being stalked, mobbed, manipulated, or harmed. This is something that we expect of third world nations, and yet American citizens gossip and destroy lives through their inappropriate helping of forces that don't have the lawful right to do what they're doing to people. We have niche groups that are being pinpointed, targeted by haters or hate group leaders or just hate groups. We have Christians defying the laws of the Lord, saying, you are not holy. And I'm like, whoa, you are going to piss God off if you say that. The Bible is pretty clear about the fact that Lord God made it all. Therefore, how do we have the right to say someone is unclean? It says that pretty clearly, too, in a Bible verse, that we don't have the right to say a human being is unclean or unholy. It's pretty clear in multiple verses, actually. But our Christian leaders sometimes forget that. They sling mud. They muck rake is what the journalism term is. And I was really impressed with one of the up-and-coming politicians to say, look, I'm not going to sling mud at somebody. I'm just going to talk about what's important in the land, which is peace. And peace between people begins at home in our intimate relationships. If you've got someone who's madly in love with someone else, but that individual will not talk to them, that's an immaturity on the part of the person who won't talk. If we've got friends that have had a discord, it's up to them to go get some food together, to sit down, have some wine, and go, look, we had a breakdown. Let's talk about this, and let's fix it, because peace is more important than fight. You see, when fight comes into play is when we have a lawyer who for president, 
And that lawyer then knows what the international treaties are and how we need to regard those in every state of the nation. These ridiculous little plays that are going on across the land with regard to a woman's rights are violating international human rights laws. Those laws are very clearly stating that an individual has a right to their human being and their body. They have no right to be impregnated. They have no right to be manipulated. They have no right to have their bodies mutilated by some sexual torture method that makes someone supposedly more fertile or supposedly more interesting to the opposite sex or the same sex for that matter. But the reality is we have governing people in different states across the land who have not recognized international laws, the treaties of our sovereign land. We have a problem there. That's something that I believe is a violation of federal law, too. You see, under federal law, we have right to our personhood, our paperwork, and our property. And it's guaranteed pretty much from the First Amendment to the last of those, as well as throughout the Constitution. The whole reason that America was founded was based on our own right to freedoms, to freedomly and freely pursue liberty, love, justice, honor, regard, employment, etc., without being mobbed, stalked, or interfered with and monkeyed with by someone who just wants to play Lord in our life. Now, when I talk about those things, I'm talking about the mayhem of people, that the mayhem thinking of a person's mind set is literally telling them that they have the right to harm, steal from, ruin, vandalize, and destroy a person's private rights to their own being, their own property, and their own legal documentation for whatever part of life is being impacted, whether it's banking, whether it's accounting of their business, whether it's their tax documents and their tax files, whether it's their medical records, it doesn't matter. That is a manipulation. The individual who's an adult has the legal right to their own documentation. No other person has the right to see it unless there's a legal reason to provide it. We have a lot of people who lie about their rights in those regards. We have apartment complexes that are demanding to see people's bank accounts, and that's not their lawful right. There are other ways to verify two and three times the employment of someone living in a place, but you know what? Sometimes we have to break and make rules that say, you know what? You've got just enough money to live here. We're going to help you. Or we're going to allow you to stay in this place because you're homeless and you need shelter and food. And our people can not only provide you the shelter of a floor here in this space, but we're also going to provide you a sleeping bag. And for that matter, our ladies are going to make sure you have canned goods because they only cost us each a dollar. And for $3 a day minimum, we can feed you. And we're honored and privileged to do that. We're not going to bring you tainted water. We're not going to bring you tainted food like it says in that international doctrine of human rights. And we're certainly not going to monkey with your health care because that is not our lawful right to say. We don't have the lawful right to tell someone what they can and can't do with their body. For some of us, it's scary when we see people turning their bodies into more animalistic and plastic-looking Ken dolls but, and Barbie dolls, but the reality is that is their lawful choice. They have the right to that choice. The right to life means I don't have the right to try and murder someone online or offline. And what I mean by that is that social media is something that is advertised. There is a law, literally, that says what we should and shouldn't gain from those free tools or those in which we pay for. It becomes false advertising if we're not receiving our services because some monster in a force has decided to remove those rights of us underneath federal law to have free and clear telecommunications. You see, Internet is something that is a part of a phone line, which means that FCC law applies. You see, there's the benefit of having a lawyer for president and there's a benefit for having a educator, a savant of the soul for president. You see, in order to make peace in the world, we have to have peace in our land. And peace in our land becomes from those intimate relationships that might have gone awry because other people started to monkey around in our rights to privacy of those relationships. Sometimes it says in the Bible that if there's a discord and you can't fix it on your own, then you reach out to others to fix it. But if those people don't want to fix it, that becomes an immoral act before the house of God. You see, I can talk about God because I love God. I can talk about money if I love money, or I could talk about a woman I loved if I loved her, but the reality is that it's my right to decide who I will love, how I will love, and where I will love, and when I will love. Very much like it is a woman's right to decide what she will and won't do with her own human being and body. 
They've got right to lifers that want to take those opportunities away, and it's not their lawful right to do. We've got people monkeying with people's computers thinking they've got the right to do it because their position gives them the power and authority to do so, and that is not true. We have cybercrime laws that says you may not pretend to be someone else. You may not steal a person's identity. You may not interfere with their lawful right to record opinion, which literally is freedom of speech underneath the First Amendment, and you have no right to take any of their personhood, paperwork, or property from their storage of their goods, whether it be in their home, their car, a storage unit, an apartment complex, or any other box or piece of luggage that an individual is literally carrying on their person or with them along life's journey. You see, we've got these ridiculous parking lot signs that says, take all this crap with you. It's hard to lug all that stuff with you. And if you're homeless, your home is your bags. And if someone gives you a meal and they think they have the right to look in your bags, that's a lie. It's a lie they tell themselves. It's a violation of federal law. It merges on theft. It's definitely an invasion of privacy. We have to have people in the world who understand the laws of the world, the laws of the land, and the laws of human beings' relationships. You don't interfere with other people's relationships. You don't put them on a separate course from where God is trying to lead them. And openly, anyone can preach about just and teach about anything in the world as long as they're good enough to do it. But if they're not good enough, then maybe they stole the information, which is then a violation of international, if you will, copyright law or intellectual property law or some other law that I'm not even thinking of right now because I am a not a lawyer, and B, I want peace in the land. We have people vying for president right now that have incredible gifts and skills that they need to be sharing with us on a day-to-day, moment-by-moment basis, not at all, that they need to be producing good quality content so people really know their hearts, minds, and souls because their bodies is not a stranger's right to know. When I talk about these things, I'm talking about a hot, controversial topic, which is saying, look, you've got your body, I've got my body, you govern yours, I'll govern mine. Don't interfere with my rights to me. And that is the absolute truth. Now, I've recorded this message several times, but someone keeps monkeying with my rights to record, and openly I find that beyond offensive. I have the right to say anything I choose. I have the right to render any opinion I want to. You have the right to decide whether or not to listen, but you also have the right to decide not to listen. And if you choose not to listen, that's not on me per se, but it is on me. Because I failed to reach you in a way, but you might have failed to listen in another way. There's always two sides to every story is an absolute truth, but the third side is what the Lord God in heaven sees from above. There's a wonderful coin I carry, and I sell sometimes at a larger discount than what I purchased it for, probably, because I'm a business person, and there's business laws that govern us there, too. But if someone steals that tax documentation, if someone steals your bank records, you feel violated. You're going to be livid. You're going to be angry. You're going to feel like, who the hell do these people think they are? And what they think is that they're lords of my life. They're not. Only one God in heaven lords my life, and I follow him to a T. I listen carefully. I pray. I meditate. I bring in information. I go where he leads, and the magic is amazing. This has been Blake Enson of Blaze Communications LLC saying, it's time for the magic of God to start permeating the beings of Christians and other people of spiritual faith and helping us to produce peace in the land and productivity in our homes. Thanks for listening.